Hey everybody, I decided to make this video because uh, a lot of you guys are playing around with 10 gig connection setups and uh, also just dealing with customizing, cutting and customizing your own LAN cables. And so I thought it's time to go ahead and talk to that because if you're going to make your own network cables, um, some really critical details you need to understand. So with that being said, we first start with our cable. So when you get bulk cable, you're going to get cable that is both um, set and that set would be either solid wire. So when you look at these wire head points, they will be solid. And you also have stranded version, which is not as normally used for basically IT requirements. Stranded is for more, more surface area, if you know physics and electronics. Um, you know, a, st a straight wire is just that, it's a straight wire. So the surface area of the copper is the connectivity area and it gives its ability to sustain surface area for ele electrical current to travel over, or electrons. When you're using stranded pair, uh, you have more surface area because you have more than a single wire in there. And so it allows more, uh, more like an amperage level to co convey across the Cat5 or Cat6 or Cat7 cable. So that's the first thing. What do you need for, let's say, a 10 gig network? Well, uh, Cat 7 will do just fine. Cat 6 can get you up there, but you want to use something above the 350 ohm style cabling uh, if you want to do 10 gig and down. Um, from partial Cat 6 will do okay, but you're not going to see the top bandwidth because of the nature of the cable. Again, it goes back to the quality of the metals and so on. The next thing you need, of course, is the ability to confirm that your wires are good. And this is a fluke neck meter. You don't have to have a fluke. You can use what's called an LED matchup device. And I'll show you how this basically works. Uh, it's very easy uh, because there are two methodologies of deploying Cat5, Cat6, Cat7 cable. And one of them is distance. In other words, you're feeding a cable from one point of the house all the way over to the other side of the house. And so it's a 110 feet of cabling or something like that. Oh, by the way, remember that 100 meters or 300 feet is the maximum you can do with Cat5 without impacting anything. And that's Cat5, 6, 7 up and going up. Actually, it's a standard across the board for all versions of Cat. Uh, so 300 feet is your maximum. I never go beyond 275 feet myself because I want that little buffer there. So what I'm going to show you now is the nature of a good cable connection. Okay, now, this is a meter, and if you look at the meter, it says 1 to 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3, 4 to 4, 5 to 5, 6 to 6, 7, 7, 8, 8. And that's what you want to see. After you've crimped your heads onto each end, this is a short haul connection. In other words, it's I can something I can directly connect to the unit. And, of course, it's also the ability of doing a long haul. And the long haul is accomplished by connecting this on one end of the long haul crimped head. And then at the other end, probably near your server rack, you will have this unit sitting here. And you will see that it will connect always to the main connection point, which is this guy right here. So that's where the wire has to plug in so that you can be able to do what you want to do. Now. In here you have mode select, which is wire mapping, as you can see here. Length, which is important because if you ran a wire and you're close to 300 feet, you better make sure you check. And of course, the office state. So let me connect up the wire here for you and you can see what it does, all right? Okay, now, I like this meter because even though it's a couple hundred dollars, it does a lot of things for me. It can do what's called a tone or a signal check. It will do your wire mapping. Make sure your, your RJ45s are correctly mounted so they'll work right. It will identify its length and it's five feet. And you've got your office mode which is classified as a four. A four series is a, is a good series. You can click through and now you can do your toning. And by doing that you would use what we call a tone probe something like this guy right here and he will pick up a pulse from the wire now 
a lot of times people will do this if their wires are all uh, or similar colors and they don't know which one's which so they tone probe it to make sure they understand what that is so that's going to what we're going to talk to next but before we do that let's talk to the long haul so i'm going to turn this off sorry about that and i'm going to put this guy here as you can see i'm going to put him on all right so he's on now we're going to start her up and it's still where it was there's the wire mapping remember it's a long way away so this is how you would still be able to do what you want to do and then of course you would have your ability of identifying the feet and length and so on so with that being done let's go to the tone probes because that's important too and it helps you understand how you can work with um, these particular setups so you have what here we call the pulse the fl fluke pulse and on the fluke pulse you know you have RJ45, which is right here, for all forms of communication, may it be phone or or, net or uh, IP. You have what's called the direct wire connection, which has, of course, its endpoints here, as you can see. And then it's got a coaxial-style uh, screw-up, which you can screw in a, uh, like a Cat5 placement to test the integrity and location of the proper cable. Then what you have is um, also a tone probe, which is on the other side. They, they come together. And uh, that's their setup. That's what they do. So what happens is this guy will generate a pulse um, that will travel through the wire, and the sensor, this guy, will pick it up. So that's what it sounds like, and you can see it has an LED. So I'll, I'll stage it here so you can see what it looks like when you're testing it. Hold on. Okay, so now we have our device here, and we're a little close, so I'm going to lower it a little bit. Or better yet, we can go sound, and with that, we can begin the process. As we get close to the copper wiring, we can see that it's identifiable. Now, if we want to change our gain, as you can see, it gets strong. Now, we can go really loud. And that's how you would use the, the probe, as you can see here. You can do it by um, the services style approach, you can do the tone probe, you can do the speaker mode, and you can do ohms. Now, unfortunately, these all three of these devices tend to drain their batteries, so I also recommend that you remove your batteries when you're not using them, or you'll just you're just pitching them in the trash can. They're 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 noisy and they're leaky. But one other detail that you need to know about is the test heads. This is a test head for like a wall mount jack uh, that you installed into the wall so that you can plug up cat5 cable or cat6 cable to a desktop computer or something like that and um, you know so you have a male version which is like this which would go into the wall socket then you have a, a female version which is designed actually for a cable so when you're connecting servers up you never use a patch uses few patch can, uh, patch connections as you can in the server environment. Now let me show you what I mean. Over here I have this beautiful Nortel 50, uh, 5600 platform down here but these wires directly connect to the servers. I don't want to patch panel uh, because patch paneling does create some issues but that's not the case for users and devices like Wi-Fi or stuff like that. You can actually use um, Patch, pan, uh, patch panel out to a, like a, an RJ45 female connector uh, mount to a wall plate and then plug up your cabling. That's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So with this being said, let's now talk to cable creation. Okay, now we're talking about creating your cables. You're in a high quality cable from point A to point B and you might be either punching it down to a patch panel like this or you're going to use an RJ45 crimper with RJ45 heads that's this piece by the way just this little plastic piece and a cable like you see here and you will crunch them down like that and then when you're done the RJ45 head is on the cable now you're either going to do class A or you're going to do class B wiring which is basically 
uh, a couple of sets of wires that will be flipped, but principally they're straight throughs. And the key thing is they're straight throughs because of the nature of the cable. Um, when you cross over cabling, that is known as a crossover cable and will allow two devices that are not switch quality level connectivity devices, specifically a NIC card that doesn't basically auto switch. It allows you to cross over a cable between two network cards without a network switch. That's principally why we use a crossover cable. It's kind of rare, and yes, they do make crossover cables that work better for 10 gig versus 1 gig. But this discussion is to talk about the tools to make the cabling. So after you pull your wire, you want to make sure that you're ready to set your wiring, put your head on carefully by following the directions. I'll, I'll put a link to how to do this in, my, in this video. Uh, and then you're going to be crunching down the internal clip lock inside the RJ45 head that locks it into place. And that keeps the wire on board. Now you have what's called a side pressure gauge at two here as well. This is not my favorite crimper. I had to buy one of these things because we were in an emergency, but you really have to crunk, crunk, crunch the heck out of it. But it does have the wire cutter right there. And that does meet your needs, but I always prefer the full ratchet because the pressure is equal. As you can see right here, yeah, and it also has the uh, wire cutting gauge right there, and you can adjust it, which is really nice, as well as flip out. Now this guy, he rocks it from, from the right to the left, so sometimes you'll find the far left head part is not as well crimped as the far right, but it, it does a fairly decent job of doing the job, it's just by preference. Next. You have what's called the plastic punch down, and as you can see here, it's plastic. Cheap, but it still kind of works, so I still keep it. It has the release and, and pressure lock right here, and of course inside you have your alternate heads. Here you've got a cutter. Now this is a stronger, better fluke style uh, placement, and of course you've got the head lock right down there, which is empty. But uh, the head is right is on it right now, and in this particular case, I believe it is. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll I'll show it to you in a second. Uh, but this is a an angle point with a blade on it. This is designed to cut the wire on the RJ45 patch board or the RJ45 female jack that you're going to put into a wall. And then there's one for a DMARC box or a DMARC block, which does not cut. So let me show you what those look like. Okay, so as you can see here, this guy is for a block. He has blunt heads with no blades. So as you look at it, if I can get it to focus, it's flat. Now on this head, it's not. It actually has a blade on it. See that blade? That blade is a cutter blade. Use that on a external RJ45 port head to cut the wires free once they're mounted into their proper sleeves. Uh, and or for punch boards, uh, that for like you want to set up a, uh, a house-like uh, patch panel board setup, uh, you would need that as well. Now if you were doing DMARC for like a 66 block, you would use the flat heads uh, to attach your phone lines and so on, your PRIs and so on. This is the head you want to use because it won't cut the wire. You deal with that later. But that's an example of what it's like to work with uh, on the cabling side. This is all you really need, to believe it or not, um, to do a good job. And you can get cable testers that are $15 each or as sophisticated as $1,500 $1, each, depending on what you're wanting to do with it. But the little fluke analyzer, uh, like the one I showed you earlier, this guy, uh, he is a really great tool to use. Um, I used it for many years in my IT division. My guys would run cabling using these little uh, fluke analyzers and my, you know, our ratchets and our sets and our punch downs to resolve or take or install whatever we needed to to get what we needed to do. So this is my segue of the tools I like to use for Cat5 wiring. It's time consuming, but the last thing I talk to is lengthing and why length is so important. Okay, so lengthing. 
Lengthening of a wire is important because when you're developing the types of lengths you want for your switch setup, for your patch panels, the one crucial thing that a lot of people make the mistake of, especially when they get really excited about making their own wires, is the minimum length or for the minimum bandwidth requirements. Now, what that basically is referring to is two things. One, if you have a patch panel, let's say there's one right here, and it's got cables coming in that are roughly, you know, let's say 120 feet long. Perfectly fine, no issues. Patch it all you want, it will work just fine. So, then, you want to run your Cat5 or your Cat6 or Cat7 patch cables up to your switch. So you make basically a 10 inch cable, right? Wrong. You do not want to do that. What you want to do instead is you want to provide a cable management port and you want to make sure that the cable management port, and I want to show you what that looks like, which is right here, has exit holes in them. See, I can see all the way to the back. Now, what happens is you want to take your patch panel, preferably put it on the back of your rack, because there's no need for you to see it. Run a three foot or longer cable, always, through your cable manager, down into your network switch. Why? Well, it's the cable. That's why. See, the secret about a Cat5 cable is not the fact that it's got copper in it, and it's a whole bunch of copper. Oh, no, 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 no. It's because it's twisted. That's right, it's in circles. So as you learn how to untwist the wires, set them up, and then put them in to the RJ45 head, you understand that when you untwist them, you affect the cable. And so you want to keep a certain length of them, as you can see here. The length is no more than an inch or two, maximum. Here it's about an inch. Cut the cables, put the heads on, and the cable still has integrity. Now this is the shortest cable you want to ever do, and this is two feet. One foot cables will generate issues because the shielding effect, the twisted pair effect actually, is not getting its full effect. <clears throat> it's kind of like um, cutting an extension cord a little short. The rectification of the fields act as a controller to keep the bleeding of the electrical fields from becoming too much, or more importantly, from interfering with each other. So by twisting them, they create kind of like a co-relationship or a symbiotic relationship between the two wires. There are eight wires in here and they're twisted into four pairs. So you hear that terminology said, four pair wire, which is eight wires twisted in four pairs. So when you untwist them and you put the head on, you still want to make sure that you've got the integrity of the wire in check. And yes, your tester will not catch this. The only way you'll catch this is if you use an ohms rating and see if the wire is properly rated for its ohms, which you can find actually on the wire itself. So this is a 350 ohm rated wire, and I can use an ohms tester to confirm that it's going to, it's passing that through correctly, and then that would work. That's the way you find it. But people who make little tiny cables that are about that long can't understand why they can't get all the bandwidth that they want. Uh, they pull them off, put a three footer or a five footer on it, runs like a champ. And that's why it's doing what it's doing. The wire nature is in itself, physics wise, functional. Now fiber optic has no issues with any of this because it's not copper. Cat5, Cat6, Cat7 are copper, and CRC errors will be generated on copper wires over their lifespan. That's very common, unlike fiber, which does not have CRC errors. They create a different kind of, they have, they have their own issues, let's put it that way. So with that being pointed out to you, I just wanted to let you guys know about this, because when you're using, you know, 10 gig RJ45 hookups on your 10 gig switch setup, and then you're on RJ45 1 gig pass-throughs, this is how you can catch these things for performance needs. So that's it for me, guys. I hope you guys got some learning from this, and I hope it's beneficial. I'll let you go, and God bless.